Blow my faith. Hello. Uh, I'm going to embarrass you massively mm. because I'm a little bit embarrassed today. You can't possibly embarrass me. No, I, I can. Let me try. A challenge. <laughs> Let me try. Um, I'm wowed by you. And I'm very, very, very rarely wowed by anybody. And that's really arrogant, isn't it? But I'm not. <laughs> to the point where I've even worn a T-shirt for you. Oh, thank yeah, you. New York, yeah. River Island. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but I am wowed by you. And I was thinking about this as, um, as we found that you were coming into the studio this afternoon. I was thinking, how would I describe Paloma Faith? Because I don't know a huge amount about you, mm. but I love your music. But you're thank one of these you. people who just mesmerizes me. Oh, thanks. Do you know what I mean by that? You know, kind of like a Russell Brand esque type of person. Like when I when when he's on stage, I'm like, okay, he's on stage, and I just and I saw you at V Festival mm. last year, and I was just wow. So it's a privilege to be sitting on the couch Thank next to you. you. High five to that. Boosh. Um, anyway, <laughs> welcome to KMFM. Um, I don't think you've been here before, have you? No, I haven't. But I was just casually wandering around this business park. Yeah, yeah. And thought that I'd stroll in. Pop in. Wicked. Yeah, that's amazing. Because that's just what I do. So can I give you my three... It's the type of gal I am. <laughs> can I give you three <laughs> words that I've described Paloma Faith in? I want to see what you think of them. Yeah. Adorable. Oh. Unique. And fairy tale. They're good words. Good words, right? I use words the I'm happy with. You're happy with them? Yeah. So V Festival last year was the um, first time I'd seen you live. And the crowd, as soon as you started picking up the pieces, was just like pop. And it was just that one of the moments for me of V Festival was just you seeing you on stage doing that and was just amazing. So how does that go through? Because that was obviously quite a big gig, right? Mm. How What goes through your head when you hit the stage and you see that many people in front of you? I never, I still don't believe anything that's happened to me. Like it's hard to believe and I sort of always step out and I never ex know what to, what to expect. Like the crowds are massive. And it's like, there's nothing like it seeing a sea of people that are like, well, actually, halfway up, they're looking at you and the other half are sort of looking at the sausage stands. <laughs> they were good sausage stands. They did good sausages. <laughs> yeah. No, pies, I know you mean. Can you see that far back? Get yeah. Can you see right the way back out? You can you see can. all the way to the back, yeah. Scary, right? It is. Tens of thousands of people. But amazing. Wow. Um... I'm a massive fan of yours from the start, from Stone Cold Sober, right the way through. I loved the Basement Jack's track. Never gets talked about that song, which is mad, and I love that song. Thank uh, you. Right the way up to uh, probably my favourite is Picking Up the Pieces, and, but this new track with uh, Pharrell, which we'll talk about very, very soon, is incredible. Two studio albums. Yeah. Double figures now with your singles. Three studio albums. Three studio albums, well, sorry. The, uh, the third one's about to come out. It's, it's about to come out. coming out on the 10th of March. Um, we'll talk about that in a second as well. But I want to talk about how you got here because uh, I was I was looking into Wikipedia, which is obviously the, the gospel for all research. Mm. Um, and all truth. And, and all truthful. Um, half Spanish. That's right. That's true. Mm. Um, so I've got a hat that I'd like to wear, if that's okay, for the rest of... Just to kind of a Mexican hat, yeah. yeah it was as close as I could get to Spanish. That's we are, great. Come on. This is limited, limited resource. Do you not want me to wear the hat? Well, if you want to wear the hat, if you feel comfortable in the hat, hat in a Mexican hat? hat, yeah, yeah, just for a bit. Then you should wear the Mexican hat. I'll wear the Mexican hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to talk a little bit about because you started very young. Mum was got you into dancing, right? Yeah. And um, then it went into a bit of acting. Mm. Holby Blue. Oh God. <laughs> Now should I take Now I'm off? embarrassed. Well, only equally as me right now with the hat on. Um, <laughs> I've seen the clip. I watched it today. Oh, no. Um, Donna, is it? Oh, stop it. <laughs> I'll stop and I'll take the hat Jeez, off. Jeez, I've right. got anxiety. Now we're even with the hat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, and, and now you're one of the one of the most popular and, and, and most well-known British artists. In Britain? Yeah, well, I would say America is massive on you at the moment. We were out in uh, Florida last year and Paloma was he hearing it on the radio with Ed Sheeran and, uh, and quite a few oh, other great. people. I don't go anywhere else, so I can comment. That's good to Amazing. know. Amazing. I didn't know that, but thanks Why? for telling me. You know that. Don't we see? You know that. Um, and the story that amazes me about you is a story that um, I hope is true, and I want mm. you to tell us a little bit about it, about the showcase and the mobile phone. Yes, that is true. It is true. Yeah, do you want me to tell the Can story you, or I, do you want to tell no, the no, story? No, 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 I, I want to hear it from you. because I. Well, I first was trying to get a record deal and I was singing in pubs for ages and ages and ages, like years. Yeah. And then um, the first time that anybody sort of showed any interest in me was Sony. And it was uh, my first label at Sony, which was Epic. Mm. 
and they asked me if I would do a showcase for them and I'd actually just filmed that scene of Donna from Holby Blue that, that morning. <laughs> and so, as you could confirm, I didn't look the most glamorous I'm capable of looking oh, to do good. that character. And so I had to, like, go back from work, transform into this sort of pop person yeah. and then do my showcase. And during the showcase, the guy who was the head of the label then um, sat and texted on his phone for ages and ages <sighs> And I just got a bit annoyed because he's the only person I was playing to. Um, so I stopped the showcase, stopped the band and just looked at him. And then he looked up from his phone. He said, what's going on? I said, I'm just waiting for you to finish your text. And he was like, oh. Very brave. Um, OK, well, sorry. And I said, yeah, well, it's a bit rude. And uh, And then he carried on. I carried on, not him. And then at the end, I told him that if he had anything to do with my career, I'd rather sing in pubs for the rest of my life. <laughs> then nine months later, <laughs> he wrote me a letter of apology. Oh, wow. And said that he hadn't forgotten me because that I was really memorable and blah, blah, blah. And he'd like to make it up to me and could I go and see him? So I sort of thought I didn't have a record deal and I'd ruin my only chance. But then nine months later, he wrote to me. But also an incredible story from a point of view of um, how much you love your music. Mm. because it matters to you that much that... Well, that people listen if they're going to at least pretend they're going to listen. Mm. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Well, uh... But I've been to gigs before with, like, really amazing jazz players who mm. just won't play when people talk. Mm. They'll just take their hands off the piano. Seriously? Yeah, like this guy called Abdul Ibrahim. He's, like, really famous jazz pianist, and he just goes like that, and he says, I'm not playing until you stop talking. Wow. But that also proves <laughs> to a point. But yeah, I know. I, I know it's. Um, there'll be lots of people listening to the radio right now going, "That's really funny because I'm, I don't you know. I've got a boss who texts while I'm trying trying to talk to him or whatever." Yeah. But from a point of view of how much uh, the music means to you, because I do see that a lot come across in a lot of the interviews I've seen you on telly. On mm. um, you talk so much about the music. It's not about the fame. It's not about the money. It's about the the whole premises of what you're trying to do. And you know, because you wrote write most of your songs or yeah. at least are involved in them all, aren't you? Yeah. So for somebody to be rude enough to sit and text and not show you the time of day that's mad so incredible story i'm glad that's true as well <laughs> um also i read about this today and we're going to talk about the album in a minute um i think i'm a, a couple of days late on this um you said that if the second album doesn't work out which is mad because it will it's the third album sorry the third album doesn't work out which is mad because it will mm. you're going to rent out the second bedroom in your flat yeah is that right well, that's what my mum suggested <laughs> I should do. It's a great idea. It's <laughs> a great idea. Cover um, the mortgage. So just, just to, you know, what would you be looking like for, for a flatmate if I wanted to apply? I I think I would say probably about 600 a month, including bills. Which is, which is good but rate. But in London is quite good. Yeah, amazing. Amazing rate. And shared, it's, you share with me in the kitchen. and Cool. Would I have to cook? You've got your own bathroom. Okay. Would share cooking? Yeah, we could share cooking. Because you love no, cooking, right? Do you know what? I love cooking. Yeah. I'll cook and you can just make sure it's clean. Because you don't just cook, do you? That's a bit of an understatement. I do. Because you're like an amazing cook. I think I'm an okay cook. Quote from Paloma in one interview. I um, am an amazing cook. I'm an amazing cook, cook at, I quote, <laughs> restaurant standard. <laughs> and I, I, I just thought at that, that point. And then I followed by um, maybe a rustic restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a rustic restaurant standard. I'd agree with that. That's incredible. How, like the one where you you go and you go, it's brilliant here. It's like home cooking. Home cooking, but a, a good standard. But good standard. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Um, Perfect Contradiction, which we'll talk about in a second, is the third album. The front cover is incredible. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. I had a look at it um, back in the last week. Um, you're a sexy woman. You sound surprised. No, you're a dead sexy woman. <laughs> I don't sound anything like that. You, you, you twist my words. Um, no, but it does look absolutely incredible. And it's all about the image and the Paloma image, which we want to talk about more in a second. But before we do that, uh, we want to get the new song on. Okay. So I, I, I don't want to kind of text or get involved in, in the introduction. I'll let you do it. It's your masterpiece. Yes, I'm really excited to introduce my new single, Can't Rely On You, which is out on February 23rd. 